All right. Welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can edit a email that was maybe written for you by ChatGPT or another AI um, that you want to sound like it's in your voice. I'm going to start with this email that uh, has been written uh, by AI for Sunamai Masumiyano. I'm going to bring Masumi on uh, to uh, edit this email together so it can be in his voice, not my voice. Um, the reason I wanted to invite you is because I've had this um, I've had this conversation with a number of students that when you write these emails like this, I want you to put it in your voice, but it's sometimes what does that mean? Especially I know what that means for me because I'm I've been writing in my voice for many, many years. Yeah. So I know what it feels like to write in my voice. But as students, what you're trying to do is learn your voice. And for these emails, which also are kind of low stakes, it doesn't really matter. It's easy to just mm -hmm. use the robot's voice, but then you never get a chance to develop your own voice. So what I want you to do is help me rewrite this in a way that's going to um, sound like your voice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first thing I want to start out with is how do you normally open your emails? Do you usually say to who it may concern? Yeah, I say to whom it may concern. I, uh, I hope this email finds you well and why I'm writing the email. So that's you, kind of like the my starter. You you would write this normally without AI? Yeah, that's that's how I've been told in, in, in school. Because for me, until... 2023 I had never seen an email where someone said this phrase at the beginning of the email and now since really? the beginning of since chat GPT has come out I get this at the beginning of my email out of like 75% of the emails and it's in my mind so for me when I get this email I'm like immediately this is BS immediately this is AI no one speaks this way humans don't speak this way the only way that oh, yeah. the only the yeah. only people who say this are people who actually are your friends, right? Like to if, whom it concern. if you don't say to whom it may concern, I hope this that sounds like you're a robot or a spam message. Oh, okay. Right? Because that's that's what the emails I get in my spam box sound like, right? Uh huh. And those were also written by robots. <laughs> okay. So Part of what I want to express here is if you don't know the other person in a in a personal way, you probably shouldn't be expressing personal things at the beginning. It's nice to say, hey, I hope you're well. That's always a nice thing to say. If you meet someone on the street, you might be like, hey, how's your day? I hope you're going doing well, something like that, right? But yeah. that's not the normal way that we engage in our email com right. communication. So I would usually right. start by, this is good enough right you're telling who you are okay and mm -hmm. even this to whom it may concern i would only be writing that if i don't know who this letter is going to so if, i will say dear undergrad advisors cs department exactly you know now it's starting to get a bit long and I, so i start editing it back and forth i'm like would i really say all that or do i only want to say undergrad advisors or do i want to say cs department member or something like that but this to me is sounding and if I'm getting that email now, it's more personal to me, right? I see. So if I, if I got that email that said, to whom it may concern, I'm like, do you even know who you're sending this to? Did you maybe mass broadcast this? Did you send it to me at UW Seattle and also to a couple other schools? Because that makes me okay. feel less valued, right? But this one makes me, oh, you're actually sending this to me and you've personally written it, wrote it to me, okay? Okay, so you wanna, you wanna make it personal but not when you don't know the exact person, then just use your departmental name. Or sure, exactly. Stuff. So when I apply for jobs, sometimes it will be dear like hiring committee member. I don't know who your name right. is, but I sometimes even, I notice this, but I don't do this, but sometimes if the hiring committee chair's name is on the ad or something like that, you might actually mm -hmm. use their name, dear Dr. So-and-so. But I think that's oh. almost too personal. If I don't know the person yet, I don't know if it's going to them first, things like that. I'll usually just say something like this. Right. Okay. 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 Next bit. Yeah. So now this part is also really formal in a way, the whole thing, but I wanted to just highlight this bit first. I think the normal way that we usually communicate would be to com combine these two sentences into one sentence. 
So what I yeah. just did okay. here is is this. We used to have this. My name is Masumi Yano, Yano and I am currently, mm. right? But then when I yeah. said it to you, I said it more like this, right? Okay, I see. I put the and in there, right? I now, see. Yeah. now, I might even wordsmith this a little bit more. It, for me, it feels a little bit too formal huh. for my voice. Maybe it's because I want to get... I want to get to this sentence as soon as possible. Both for you, the sender of the email, and for the receiver of the email, the most important thing is what is this email about? Right. Why, why? What do you want from me? Right? Mm -hmm. And often, when I'm editing emails, I might edit it down so that is like the only sentence. <laughs> you know, everything else gets deleted out. Maybe the thank you for my considering my request. That's almost it. That's all I really want in there, right? Everything right. else is going to drag them down unless it's important information that they're going to need to make the decision or do what you're asking them to do, right? So I almost want to start with that. Or like this is bad writing, but I kind of want to do something like this too, right? Like mm -hmm. put it all into one big thing, right? Yeah. yeah. So here's here's sort of where i'm going with it so i like the okay introducing yourself is kind of important it's not mm -hmm. super important right up front because sometimes people don't care and it already says at the bottom who you are so you know i'll figure that out when i get there but right i might i might do this to start out mm -hmm. okay and then i might say Like I might, but you see how the only information that I've taken out, mm -hmm. what is, we've used like 17 words here to say, I'm a computer science major at the, okay. And I can put it here. Right. In two right. words and it's the same information, right? And now the sentence that we've created is more concise, conveys the information we want right away. Now I put UWT here, but for formality's sake, I might then go back and do something like this where I'm like, okay, what I really mean is, right. That makes it a little, have, what's that? Don't I have like in departmental, like a departmental transfer? Because, you know, I think, I think it's important to say that like, this is not just me trying to transfer from like general undeclared Tacoma okay. to it's like actually I'm already in the CS department and I want to transfer from to go on Seattle. Right, I like it because and now you see now what you're doing is you are expressing your voice, right? Like these are the things that are important to you to say, and you just noticed that in that edit that I made, we we cut out something important to you. So let's put that back in, okay? So to the University of so I want to say to CSE, I think that's what mm -hmm. it's called up there at the University of Washington, so. Seattle, from CSS at UW. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Now, this is what I'm talking about with the practice of writing. I've been doing this for many, many years, so I kind of have these tricks up my sleeve, right? So that's also mm -hmm. why I want to share them with you here. But now, right. that sent this sentence that we have here conveys the exact same information as the three sentences that were there before. But now mm -hmm. it sounds more like a human, which is the first important part about having a human voice, right? But it might also mm -hmm. sound more like you because the, right. the information that you care about is there in front and center, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I haven't really read these next bit yet because I'm anticipating that it's probably gonna be a lot of AI gobbledygook, <laughs> okay? So my instinct <laughs> Like we've almost got everything we want in one sentence there. Okay, so my instinct yeah. is to just delete it all, but I feel like there's probably some f content there that we so, might want to express. Right? Yeah, the second paragraph is basically saying that I know the class is fast, but I'm ready for it. And then the third part is say that like, just let me know if there's any information that you guys need. Right, okay, boom. And you know what? <laughs> what you just said there was almost way more perfect, right? The first bit, was a little too informal, right? Because you're like, yeah, I know it's fast paced and I'm ready for it. Okay, that's good, but it seems it sounds a little too 
arrogant almost right right um right. so we want but we want to say that exact same thing but just as short and concise but a little bit less you know pompous okay so mm -hmm. um let's say so, that's why when i was giving you advice earlier earlier i used this word eager right right because what we kind of want to do is show to whoever it is that you are eager. That's what we want to express, right? Like I'm eager yeah. to join this program. So let's talk more about why it is that you want to go there and then reference these points, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm eager to join CSE because you are known for so I don't know, yeah, right. your rigorous and fast paced curriculum. And also, I don't know, cause I can, I'm not, I'm not talking about machine learning yet, right? Mm -hmm. Cause I have a lot of stuff that I can say about machine learning, but this email is just a kind of introduction, so. Exactly, but we can, look, I understand that you want to express something like that. So let's try and put something in here. Let's add a little clause on the end of this sentence that says, um, that you're attracted to some of their classes or something like that, right? It's just that, like, I think the most vague the answer for it is like, they, they just have more opportunity and the more class options. Boom, more, I like that, okay. Be like actually who I want to be in the future, you know? And not all be right wordsmithing yet, but your curriculum yeah. offers more opportunities. Or that helps my, me too. my career path or my, yeah. Yeah. He, I'm dropping in kind of formal jar, jargony words. AI is going to drop that in there for you too. Right. But you want the right ones that make you feel like that's how I would say it. That's the thing that I want to say. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. And that's kind of what we've got going on here. And I think we maybe combine that into one sentence because we said I'm eager to do this. So that maybe because of this, and your curriculum mm -hmm. offers more opportunities for my career path. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, and let's look at this one then. So I would appreciate the opportunity to discuss this further. Please let me know if there are any forms or other dish. Um, this is just a lot of sentences saying the same thing, right? Yeah, it's just say, please let me know if you guys need anything. Boom, how do you feel about this email? This is more concise and more human, human sounding. Yeah. If that makes sense, yeah. yeah. And it didn't start with, hi, I'm AI, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because I don't think everyone else notices that yet, but because I use AI so much now, mm -hmm. when I get emails that are, that start with that, it is pretty much saying this email was written by ChatGPT, and I'm really? okay to me, if it says yeah. that at the beginning, because I've seen so many of these emails, so I know which emails are written by ChatGPT and which ones are not. Now that's not sure. saying everyone has built that filter yet, right? Mm -hmm. But I know that in a year or two, it will be. So I'll give you an example, like, you know, yeah. when, when Microsoft Word came out, you know, a long time ago, there was this one template for, for uh, making a resume, right? Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. and at first, um, it looked really cool. Everyone's like, wow, that's a real slick looking resume you've got. But after a while, since everyone was using the same one, it started to look a little bit cheesy. And everyone was like, oh, you're just using that same template from Microsoft, aren't you? And I feel like that's what's going to happen with AI. At first, we don't notice it. And we say, oh, that sounds kind of smart. This person's smart. But then later, it's going to be like, oh, that sounds kind of dumb. Like this person is just cutting and pasting out of chat GPT, right? So I see. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Okay. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you in that next video.